Something Second to Nerfs commented on in the past is that when they nerf a card in Marvel Snap, while it obviously has a direct impact on how that card functions in the game, it has an even bigger psychological impact on how players view those cards, and more importantly, how much they tend to be played in proportion to what their power level actually goes down to. Elsa Bloodstone is one such example of this. She was reduced to only giving the card that fills your lane plus two, and she kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. Elsa Bloodstone is still an incredibly powerful Marvel Snap card, like you're going to see in today's video. In a game where you don't really do anything fancy with her, you just fill all three of your paths. She's still providing eight points worth of stats for two energy, which is incredibly above rate. And in the games where we're bouncing things, whether Kitty Pride returning herself, or things like Falcon or Beast bouncing an entire path back to our hand, we can trigger her again and again and again. Today's decklist is kind of just an old school uh, Elsa kitty bounce deck leveraging uh, other recent release Nico Badaru here for various utility. This deck list gets points on the board with Elsa as well as Collector and Bishop as well as Mysterio who serves a kind of double purpose of being able to fill all our paths up for Elsa nicely while also counting as three cards played out for Bishop. One interaction to note here if you're not familiar with it is that when we bast Mysterio it turns the Mysterio and both of the clones into three power things effectively becoming nine points worth of stats for just two energy on top of all the other things it's triggering on the board for us. Honestly, I was really impressed with the numbers that this deck was able to put up. I rattled off a very quick 6-1 and one record with it in the top 300 of the Infinite Ladder with the session that the games are going to get from today. If you enjoy what you see, be sure to snap that like button. Hopefully you have at least half as much fun watching as I did playing because this deck is a treat. Oh, we're just getting killmongered. Is that is the step? It. It's a shame too that it's uh it's another polarized matchup. Otherwise, otherwise this Nico would just be insane. What if if I do this? Do I play the hood for the beast trigger, bishop trigger? Probably not. I guess I, guess I would have grown the collector too. Yeah, maybe that was the line. We're probably good either way. Chava is a very boring card. Completely agree. The number the number one card I am excited to see get reworked in Marvel Snap eventually is Chavez. Like Marvel Marvel Snap will be a better game with more interesting deck building when Chavez has a different text box. The Chavez rework confirmed. It was, I don't remember if Glenn for, guaranteed confirmed it or if it was just strongly hinted at. That 
I'm blowing up Deadpool on two means I do get... Means I do get crapped on by, uh... Do get crapped on by a Killmonger here. Oh, you know what? I probably should have Bastid just for the sake of uh, pumping Collector by one, huh? Stop, Mr. Point. Honestly, might be this. I need to not have priority going into the last turn so I don't die to Killmonger. Or they could Killmonger proactively now, and it's great for me. I think we also managed to duck having priority here, but again, like, that's a thing you need to think about with this deck. Oh, we would have had priority. To go longer, yes. And this ties the left still. Excuse me, plus 16 in the middle. And it puts me to... Just leave Victory. Like we, were, like we were talking about yesterday, I think Kitty and Elsa are both cards that gamers, like, threw away. Despite let them likely still being reasonable. Okay, anything but Beast is a great pull here on Sakaar. Deal. We take those. Yes, that is definitely true. Part of... Part of Hitmonkey's problem is that it's really bad against Professor X Eliath stuff. Playing cards like Bishop and Collector lets you proactively put points on the board. I think it's Bishop on the right. Second Beast actually isn't very useful here now. I think it's this, right? Just put the most points on the left. It's probably just this. And this is, this is even beating them Eliathing us on the left because we're moving Jeff into here. And then we're also pumping the collector by one. So we're going to 14 and then 15. So even if they like Eliath us here, we're still winning this. In 2023, is it is a job hopping pretty pretty typical? Thank you for the support at any rate. Appreciate the primer. Coconut Wrangler, thank you for the three quarters of a year. Power. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and play that out and get her doubled since I'm playing Collector next turn and then Wolf Falcon eventually. Draw one cost card from my deck. We'd be slightly resource and efficient to do this, right? Yeah, every time.
I'm gonna play collector here for two reasons. Hood here. Alright, so Zabu Korg makes Killmonger a bit less likely, which is nice. Makes Shang-Chi more likely, though, so I'm gonna need to be thinking about can I duck Shang on the Collector while we play? Which I'm not sure that that's gonna be an option. Let's go full ham here. Order. This is more than seven, right? Killmonger, you have Killmonger. Now we're masting our gaming gamers. I guess it was just one more cube. That was, that was probably, uh, screw it. We limp for one angle, I assume. Beaster Falcon, please. Beaster Falcon, please. Oh, snap. Pre Recorded, etc., etc. Actually, it's this, right? Obviously, we're basting the demon here, but we're basting two heads as well. Big deal. Oh, we're basting a lot more than our hoods, shit. Wow, that worked out. Golly. Look at all those one threes, shit. They're beautiful. Do do do. Do 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 do. I think I want to fill the center here so that way they can't kick rocks across and we'll fill it with kitty pride so that way uh, we're not full there. This keeps me the same amount of power here. I go plus eight here. I go plus 13 here. You're about to be hazmat. And hazmat could get us, yeah. Victory. The bounce decks have really neat dynamics into the Nihilus decks.
This is something I'm really not sure of. But so far, the draw mode on Nico has felt kind of mid in this, uh, in this deck. Is that, is that crazy to say? Like, it feel it feels, it feels like sacrilege to say it. But it's how, it's how I'm kind of, kind of feeling so far. Don't say it, she won't forgive you. I mean, Nico as a whole has been wonderful in this deck still. I just don't know that I'm buying that, uh, that the draw mode is what I really want to be gunning for. If I do this, next turn I could go Elsa, one drop, one drop, and trigger Elsa. Now I could go Kitty Pride Beast. No, that fills my hand. I'm gonna go Elsa Demon Kitty Pride. Do I wanna get the bonus of the demon? Maybe. It's a good a good shout. We can even send the uh, the green gabo across here. On the last turn, everything we play into the forge will uh, will make the collector bigger as well. They're gonna send the goblin back. No, hey, that's fine. I should win. I should win the other two. again that that was uh that was a line <laughs> Victory. that's all snap the like button if you'd be so kind and check back in again tomorrow for another highlight